On today's episode of Monsters of Yacht, we're going to navigate the expensive, cord-infested waters of Hay 19 by Steely Dan. The guitar parts I'm going to show you today aren't exactly what's on the record. This is just a great way to play the tune with your band if you don't have like 30 other people in the group. Here's everything we're going to cover and where you can find it. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Captain Uncle Ben. Hey 19 by Steely Dan, one of my favorite tunes to play. One of their easier songs, I would say, even though it still has like 80 bajillion chords in it. This is a lot of fun to learn. Now like I said in the intro, the way I'm going to show you the chords today is how I would play it if I was playing in a band that didn't have two keyboard players and three drummers and nine saxophonists and stuff like this song is usually performed with. So that being said, it's not note for note what is on the album, but it sounds really dope and it can teach you a lot about cool, expensive chords. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're going to get access to a ton of bonus videos, backing tracks, and so much more good stuff. This week, absolutely everybody who supports my channel at any level is going to get access to downloadable tabs and chord charts and stuff to go along with this video to help you through it even more easier. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise for this video, I'm playing my lovely Ernie Ball Luke 3 in Fire Mist Purple Metallic. And I'm playing that through the Amplifonics and Gain Head by Amplified Nation. I'm not using any pedals or anything in front of this today, it just sounds this freaking great on its own. I'll probably add a little delay, reverb, and logic in post, but everything you're hearing is coming straight out of this amp. This thing is insane, and it also does an incredible plexi sound too, it's pretty awesome. First things first, let's talk about that intro. This also doubles as your chorus, so you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this one. We'll be playing all of today's chords finger style, so take your pick and make it walk the plank. First thing that we do is a hard stop on the C sharp seven chord. This is just like your regular C seven grip, you know? Just move up a half step. Now after this, uh, it plays that intro guitar solo. I'll show you guys that later on in the video. And behind that are the chorus chord changes, which sound kind of like this. So soft and silky smooth. Start off with your F sharp minor seven chord. Notice I kind of hit the bass note and then pluck the high notes. This is just like your regular minor bar chord shape, you know, your B minor shape. 
just leave your little finger off and center it here at fret number nine of your A string. After that, we're gonna play this shape. Now, this is starting off here on D14, G13, and B12. You hit those three notes and slide them down a whole step. This kind of looks and feels like a E triad going to a D triad, but at this point, the bass is playing a B note, so it ends up sounding like B minor seven, root, flat third, fifth, flat seven right there. And then after this, we have a C sharp minor seven. I'm just barring the ninth fret here, avoiding the A string, plucking the bass note, and then the D, G, and B strings. Do it again. Then this series of chords, I love these. This is your F sharp minor seven again. An A, would that be A9? So again, this is just a one finger bar on the 12th fret. A string, G string, B string, high E string, A9. And then after this, we're gonna play D major seven. This is just a 12, 14, 14, 14. And then do a G9 chord. It's just like that one finger shape you used a second ago, just a step lower. Isn't that cool? And then you're gonna do this move. So this is, once again, our F sharp minor seven kind of hammering in the middle and ring fingers here. So I'm going from a flat bar to hammering in the chord shape and then taking it back off. At that point, that's kind of like a E over F sharp chord. A minor seven. Again, another one finger bar on the fifth fret. So this time I'm gonna be using my low E string, D, G, and B strings. So uh, it sounds like this. And then after this, I kind of led into the verse part by playing a D flat triad into a D triad. Again, just a one finger bar here on six DGB, sliding up a half step to seven. That gets you through the chorus changes and into the verse of the song. So one more time with the chorus all together, it's gonna sound like this. So the verse part of the tune is a lot of fun to play. It centers around a chord progression of D, G, and A. And it's got a couple of different turnarounds in there, like that one, that signals a return to the chorus. But here's how the main section of the verse goes. We're gonna start off here with a bar on the 10th fret. Now this is gonna get us into our D7 sound. I like to incorporate that little lick that the keys do. So what I'm doing here is I'm barring the 10 and I'm hitting the E, D, G, and B strings and then just hammering that G string up a half step to 11. Kind of gives you that slick sound of the keyboard part. After this, we're gonna play a D over F sharp inversion. Nine, 12, 11, 10 on the middle four strings. After this, play a G, simple bar chord shape, 10 and 12s. And then after this, we're gonna play the 70s chord. It's not a yacht rock tune with that, that guy in there. Love the sound of that. That's an A11 chord. Some people might also call this a G. There's a G triad over A with an A note in the bass. You can do that a million different ways. Uh, but this is the way that I'm doing it. I got 12 on the A, G, and B strings and 10 on the high E string, okay? So you got your hammer on move, inversion, G, A11. cycle it with this. Two 70s chords in a row. Oh my. Again, you could call this F over G or call it G11 and then slide that up a whole step back to your A11 shape. So uh, again, fret wise, that's three, skip, three, two, one, sliding up a whole step. Love that turnaround. So cool. Now on the record, the guitars are just doing some pretty minimal stuff. It kind of feels like B minor pentatonic. 
This is kind of some little... Little double stomp, you guys. That's how I play it if I'm playing with a full band and somebody else is, you know, playing those chords on keys or something. Uh, but again, this is a good alternative if you're not playing with a keyboard player. So the verse continues through those chords until we get to that little turnaround that happens. Uh, where the hell am I? That part of the song. And it's going to go to these chords. Isn't that sick? Okay, so those turnarounds right there, we're going to play B minor 7. Again, a one finger bar here, just omitting the A string. Take it up whole step to C sharp minor 7. A G major 7. This is like 10, 12, 11, 12, middle four strings. And then you're going to play the Hendrix chord on C sharp. This is a, uh, what would that be, C sharp 7 sharp 9 chord. If you don't know the Hendrix chord, it's this guy right here. Middle four strings, 4, 3, 4, 5, okay? Big funky dominant. That's the ultra dominant chord that every guitar player knows. verse section of the song. Now these chords, if you're maybe playing this at like a, you know, acoustic singer songwriter thing, it might be kind of burdensome to play these up so high on the neck and it also might sound a little bit thin. Uh, whenever we get to the bridge part of the song, I'm going to show you another way to play them down low that might sound a little bit more full if you're playing this as like one man acoustic band stuff. After this you're back to the chorus changes that you already know. Another verse. Do that same turnaround into the chorus, blah, 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 blah. And another chorus. Now, after this is where we get to the middle section of the song where the guitar solo is. And uh, these chords right here are pretty ambiguous and pretty strange. Here's how it starts off it starts off with an E minor 7. But again, you can see I'm doing that move kind of like what we did earlier, where I'm taking the uh, middle and ring fingers on and off the chord. This is now going to a D over E kind of sound. And again, those are keyboard moves, but they sound cool on guitar. Then play a C minor 7. Just barring here at 8, leaving the A string out. Okay. Oh. Show you the solo later. Now at this point we go to a really ambiguous chord. I've seen this transcribed a lot of different ways. Some people just play F. We're playing F here. But there's a B flat in the bass. So it'd be like an F with the 11 in the bass, which is kind of unlikely. Um, here's how I think about this chord. I think of it as an F triad. So you gotta make your D shape up here at the fifth fret on the top three strings. But we're gonna need to do it with these fingers. Um, actually, there's a couple of ways you could do this. Um, yeah, that's how I do it right there. <laughs> so I'm going to bar the five on the top three strings with my first finger. I'm going to use my uh, ring finger here to play that B string six. And then using my middle finger, I'm going to put that down here on the low E string, fret number six, ignoring the A and D strings, of course. This is now an F over B flat kind of sound. Kind of a nice B flat Lydian sort of tonality. This is the hard part. So if you want to grab what the keys are implying right here, what you're going to have to do is to move that B string from F to G on the 8th fret. This is a really nasty stretch. Okay? And then you play this beautiful A13 chord. Awesome. Root, flat 7, 9, 11, 13. It's nothing but extensions. Isn't that cool? Just a little stair step shape here. Two, three, four, five from the high notes. And your open A string. Again, you could think of this as G major seven with an A in the bass. I just think of it as being a huge A dominant chord because that gets us back to D, which we use in the bridge. Okay, so our middle solo section, starting off here on E minor seven. C minor seven. F over B flat 
and our A13. Isn't that nice? Okay, now we're to the bridge part of the song, the Cuervo Gold, the Fine Columbia, and all that jazz. So I'm gonna play this down low because it sounds nice and full, but this is also a great way to play those verse changes if you're playing on acoustic or you know just wanna play down low and make it sound bigger, like I mentioned earlier. So check this out. Here's what we're going to do. We're playing a D down here, but you'll notice that I'm playing it in a really strange way here. I'm using fingers 1, 3, and 2 to play it. That is so my first finger here can have the independence to do this little move where I'm going to slide from the F note on the first fret to the F sharp note on the second fret. Again, this is the same deal we played up here, just down here on a D chord instead. After this, you're gonna play a D over F sharp. I'm using my thumb here to play the low F sharp note. A G, and then an A7. Now this is the regular A7 kind of shape, O2, O2, you know? But you'll notice a few times in there, instead of A7, I played the A11, the, uh, the 70s chord, like I mentioned earlier, G triad over an A bass note. Uh, you can use either one. I think it sounds really cool either way. A7. A11. I think that sounds a little more yacht rock, so I tend to favor that one. So you're just gonna cycle through that progression a few times. that same G11 to A11 turnaround like what you used in the verses earlier and again this is just a great way to play the verse anyway and then um, once they get to those make tonight a wonderful thing parts they do a slightly different turnaround you could ignore this entirely it's not like it messes with the vocal or anything but it's worth doing it's worth doing right you know so you're gonna have your regular progression starting on D and then check this out D F sharp minor 7, G, and then your A dominant of your choosing. Okay, so that's our D, F sharp minor 7. Again, that's just a one finger bar at 2, avoiding the A string. Our G, and then your A dominant of your choosing. That could be the A11 or the A7. Either way is fine. bridge part of the song. That section ends with the same turnaround that you used at the end of the verse to go into the chorus. B minor 7, C sharp minor 7, G major 7, C sharp 7, sharp 11. Lead you back to the chorus. And then you have the outro with uh, the key solo and stuff. That's going to be over essentially the bridge part. all the main chord progressions of the tune. Okay, now let's talk about the two short guitar solos in the song. Neither of them are too hard to play, but they sound really dope. Ahoy guys, editing chair Ben here working on this video. Through this first solo section, I, I think I showed you a few things slightly differently than what I have on the tab. I may be suffering from some scurvy or something right now and getting some of that C madness going on, I don't know. Follow the tab a little more closelier than you follow my words. You'll be good to go. Now let's talk about the two short solos in the song. The first one that we hear is very much centered in F sharp minor pentatonic land. Start off here with the fourth fret G and whole step bend. Let her down, pull it off to two, and then bend it again, okay? Then you're gonna play a similar idea only up here on the seven and five of the high E string. It sounds like this. Okay. 
and then play. Okay? Then jump down. I'm gonna play it again. Bend. High E string two. Bend. And resolve here on F sharp, okay? Again, nothing too terribly crazy, but it sounds really dope. Then we get to the middle solo section that takes place over the weird E minor to C minor changes. Um, over the E minor 7 part, you're not gonna play anything. But when the chord changes to C minor 7, we're gonna play this. Really simple line, just on that little box of the 6th and 8th fret on the top two strings. Pre bend. And slide up, down, up, down. A little compression on your amp will really help carry those notes through. And then after this, you're going to take a rest over the next chord, the uh, was that F over B flat. And then when it goes to the A13, we're going to play this leg. Okay, so I'm sliding in here to the B note. The D note, the E note, with the full step bend. Sometimes I see people play it like this. That sounds more like the record, actually, now that I listen to it. Off of one little pluck, sorry to keep the sustain going, though. So you're going to have B, D, E, whole step bend. Then you're going to do a quick letdown, and the D note down here, okay? And then play this double stop. Kind of lands you in a G shape. So what you're going to do here is to grab the, the D and B strings and slide into the 12th fret, 10 here on the high E. Now when he hits that 10 on the high E, he kind of slides down the neck to get ready for this. Just getting into this D dyad right here. Again, D and B strings here, 6 to 7 on both of them. And that is the middle solo. So you have your first lick with the uh, pre-bend. Couple of chords go by. And that's all she wrote. So there you go guys, another easy listening but maddeningly hard play in tune here on Monsters of Yacht. Let me know in the comments section what other classic yacht rock tunes you guys would like to see broken down next. I'd love to do some like Boss Skaggs and Christopher Cross and all that kind of stuff. So let me know your favorite Yacht Rock classics down there and we'll get to them on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. If you liked what you see and want to get even more out of it, plus help support my channel, be sure to sign up today to that Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. It's where you're going to get the chord charts and stuff to go along with this video. So don't delay. Sign up today. Well, guys, it's been a joy as always, but as for me, I think it's time to go make myself a pina colada and start relaxing responsibly. I suggest you guys get away from the computer, grab your guitar, and get to work on this Steely Dan classic. Less clicking, more picking.